Radiation in the Treatment of Lung Cancer. This is one of a series of cancer videos found on the website aboutcancer.com. The best advice on treating cancer is often found on the website of the National Comprehensive Cancer Network, a network of academic cancer centers. At nccn.org, you can find the most current advice on treating cancer. The guidelines are quite complex, and patients should ask their doctor to review the current guidelines with them that are appropriate. There is a patient-friendly website at nccn.com. In general, stage 1 and 2 patients have surgery, often with postoperative radiation and chemo, and stage 3 and 4 patients are often treated with radiation plus chemotherapy. The first step in radiation is called the simulation. The patient has a special CAT scan. The anatomy is drawn into the computer and the physician contours the normal structures in the cancer target. There are published guidelines to help the physician identify the targets that need to be radiated. Usually a PET scan will be used to help identify the most active parts of the cancer. And because of lung motion, it may be necessary to do multiple CT scans or a so-called 4D CT to develop a target called an ITV that accounts for movement or motion of the tumor. Here the anatomy has been contoured into the computer system. You can see the cancer in red, the abnormal lymph nodes in blue. At the time of treatment, lasers are used to line up the beam on the patient tattoos and the patient is radiated. There are published guidelines on the appropriate dose of radiation, generally six to seven weeks, Monday through Friday. Image-guided IMRT may be used now to target the radiation even more accurately or effectively. With tomotherapy, a daily CT is done and the radiation can be adjusted, so-called adaptive radiation, as the tumor shrinks or changes position. Here the radiation is seen passing through the body through the rib cage to hit the target and the lung. Here the cancer is shown in blue and the radiation cloud in green surrounding the target. This case was more advanced in red. The cancer has abnormal lymph nodes and the yellow radiation zone is surrounding the target. The computer will also show the dose to the normal structure. Here the normal lung is being shown on how much of that is radiated. There are guidelines in identifying the normal structures that need to be accounted for to avoid side effects or radiation damage or toxicity. Here the computer has targeted the other structures including the heart, spinal cord, and esophagus to identify these structures. And there are published doses on what is considered safe to the normal structures to avoid complications. Radiation results, often the tumor will shrink down, sometimes slowly. Here on the PET-CT, you can see the tumors disappeared. Here a larger mass on a CAT scan three years later. It's all that's left is some gray scar tissue. Here after five months, the PET still shows some residual activity in the tumor, but it's much smaller. Here a large tumor at three months, there's still some vague activity in the center of the tumor. This would be watched. This patient, PET scan shows continued shrinkage at one month after and even at four months, the tumor is still responding. This patient had a large cancer and had preoperative chemo radiation. A month later, the PET scan was back to normal. At the time of surgery, no viable cancer was found in the specimen. Tomotherapy images are useful. Here the tumor has opened up the area of lung collapse and the radiation field could be adjusted. Same thing, here a large tumor is shrinking down and the radiation field was adjusted or adapted. The overall survival by stage for lung cancer is poor. Even in stage 1, the cure rates are not particularly good and in stage 3 patients tend to run in the 10 to 20 percent range. Radiation alone is an option for stage 1 and 2 lung cancer, but the overall five-year survival is not particularly good. This has led to an interest in radio surgery. Highly targeted, highly focused radiation can be used for early stage lung cancer. CyberKnife is probably the best technique because it adjusts for movement of the tumor within the lung. The CyberKnife head basically breathes along with the patient and will adjust constantly and hit the target. There are published doses for radiosurgery regimens. Usually three, four, or five treatments is all that's necessary. There are published tables on what's considered a safe dose when using radiosurgery technique. 
and many of these patients that we treated with CyberKnife, the tumor disappears quite quickly, as all that's left is a small clip to mark the area of the cancer. There are more and more published studies with radio surgery for early stage lung cancer that have results that look as good as conventional surgery, and there are a number of trials now conducting that are comparing conventional surgery with radio surgery for early stage lung cancer. This may be more of an option in the future. Side effects of lung radiation, like any type of radiation, depend on what normal structures are in the way. The ribs, the normal lung, skin, nerves such as brachial plexus, heart or pericardium, and esophagus. Short-term patients usually have a sore throat, trouble swallowing, a dry cough, chest wall tenderness, sunburned skin, and tiredness and fatigue. Long-term side effects are more significant. There's a small risk of stricture in the esophagus, but the main problems are related to normal lung that gets radiated. Short-term radiation pneumonitis shows up at one to three months. Long-term radiation fibrosis or scar tissue at six to 12 months. Many patients who are smokers have severe COPD and very poor lungs prior to radiation. And in this case, it's, norm it's critical to protect as much normal lung tissue as possible. Here you can see the radiation pneumonitis or fibrosis as its radiation is passed through the lung on the left. This patient had a large tumor in the center of his lung shown yellow on the PET-CT, the radiation cloud in the middle. The bottom panel shows that the cancer is gone, but there's now inflamed lung behind that. Same patient at 18 months, the area of inflammation is smaller, but there's even more scar tissue or fibrosis in the left lung and the normal lung volume is even smaller on that side. This patient had a very active tumor on the PET-CT and the cancer has melted away. But by 14 months, you can see some gray scar tissue in the left lung and the volume of normal lung is smaller. This patient, the large tumor, very bright on PET scan is gone, but the bottom panel shows that in place of the cancer, there's now a large area of fibrosis behind it. At four months and by seven months, you can see the radiation fibrosis is getting smaller or shrinking down. These are other cases showing typical radiation fibrosis extending out into the right lung at nine months after radiation. Similar case at nine months after radiation. Radiation fibrosis developing in the right lung. Radio surgery, because it's so highly targeted, may have the least side effects. Here the radiation fibrosis is only in the area surrounding the cancer. All the details are found on the website about cancer.com, including radiosurgery, tomotherapy, and cyberknife.